here today to talk about the all new Fujifilm X8. You, you don't care. You're here to learn if the autofocus is as good as Canon and Sony. Let's hop in the airship and we'll talk more. Off we go. We. Damn. So I plan to make a normal review video, but after a few days with this camera, I noticed that the Fujifilm X-H2S was picking subjects up at significantly further distances than my Canon R6, more on that to come in this video. And it was dropping IAF boxes at extremes that honestly made me feel a little bit warm. Maybe that was just the four hot dogs that we ate within an hour of arriving in Iceland. I'll be honest though, I was not expecting this. The autofocus upgrade is fast, sticky, and gives you confidence that you are getting a frame. Four hours earlier, Actually, first, uh, this video is sponsored by Focal, the simplest back-end solution for photographers. I am also a part owner of Focal. More at the end. I said it'd be around here. Maybe this is it. Yeah, this must be it. Look at all the stuff back here. We got Fujifilm Blimp and the all-new X-H2S. Two rolls of medium format Provia, limited edition Frisbee, banana, and oh wow, this is beautiful. This might be the nicest hat I've ever owned in my entire life. It was great with the Blimp. I think we're ready. As disclosure, Fujifilm did not give us any money for this review. They also did not tell us what to say or have approval on the final video. They simply loaned us all of these pre-production items. This is actually serial number 23, which is pretty crazy. It also means that the firmware is not yet final, which means this camera, these lenses, are only gonna get better from here. So let's go play some Frisbee. Thanks, Taylor. What is the Fujifilm? X-H2S. It is a 26 megapixel stacked backside illuminated CMOS sensor. This means faster sensor readout, which allows for faster overall camera performance. Also, better images, better high ISO, and this camera shoots 40 frames per second, which means that you can absolutely capture the decisive moment of your midday landscape photography. Got it. And up to seven stops of IBIS. So let's maybe go test that first. How long do you think you can handhold a waterfall shot? Is it a, a half second, B, one second, or C, two seconds handheld. Let's go to Taylor in the field. Taylor. Front row parking here at a new waterfall that they just installed last week. Just turned the pumps on. They're actually made by Jacuzzi of all companies. Let's go check it out. Half second exposure, handheld. Sharp. Can we do one second? Should we do two seconds? All right, there we go. Two second handheld exposure. Uh, how sharp is it? That's pretty all right for two seconds handheld, I think. Welcome to Radio Blue Lagoon. Tip of the day, don't drink the water, you psychopath. Here we are at the Silica Hotel, Blue Lagoon. Probably never heard of it. Wow, bridge. Using the classic chrome film simulation here. Film simulations of all Fuji cameras are amazing. Because this is a pre-production unit, I am likely not going to have full access to the RAW files yet, so everything you're seeing is a straight out of camera JPEG, maybe with some minor tweaks if I want to Photoshop Marshall into the water. But other than that, everything you're gonna see in this video is straight out of camera. And straight from my heart, also. I sure wish I brought my roller blades. This is how they make clouds. This is 4K 2997 footage of them making clouds. Yeah, these clouds I think are going to southern New Mexico, actually. If you're in North America or Europe, um, there's a pretty good chance that your clouds are coming from this, this here factory. Also, tomorrow there's going to be a video going up on the 18 to 120 F4, and the following day, the 150 to 600. So if you're interested, subscribe, turn the bell on, and I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know how to play chess. Now we're here in Canada, in front of this gray wall, and uh, we're gonna run some more autofocus tests. I feel like we didn't quite get enough in Iceland. We're gonna go back to Iceland in this video. I have the 23 1.4, the new one on right now, and we're gonna have Clarissa run back and forth at 40 frames a second. We're gonna see how many of those frames are in focus, and also just run some other tests, maybe even against the Canon R6 that you're seeing over here. So let's, let's go. I guess I can't green screen this to be something else. It's just, it's just a wall. All right, you ready for track and field day? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I think that was a lot of photos. It was silent now that I'm plugged into the monitor for some reason. 
anyways. So they're just all in focus as you go through. 40 photos per second. All in focus. Maybe Clarissa is too easy to photograph, and maybe we should go photograph some puffins. Up at the uh, Black Sand Beach where we expected to see puffins. We knew we were very early season. And unfortunately, I don't think there's puffins. It's also really windy and raining. It's cold. So we're just gonna, we're gonna see what's up on the cliffs from the car. Got this prime parking spot. And let's see. Some seagulls. I don't know. Now, Canon R6 versus the Fuji X-H2S. And as I mentioned in the intro, I was impressed with how far and accurate the eye and also just like general human detection uh, picked up. And as you can see here, the Canon starts to get a little, it, it kind of knows that Clarissa is there, but then it's like, ah, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll find some other stuff and let you, it's all in focus because it's far enough. It doesn't really matter, but it is more accurate on the Fuji film camera which is very very surprising if you want me to run more in-depth testing let me know and maybe we can bring out maybe even a canon r3 and test it up against it uh, or another camera if you so just chime in the comments let me know we're here at the black sand beach and today we're getting out of the vehicle and uh, we're looking for some puffins good news everyone we got puffins that was so funny i wish we had the uh the recorder out here it just selects the puffins face and it's like yep this is this is bird take your photo that's so funny. I am on zone focus AFC and the puffins are nesting up here. We can't really see them in their nests and they fly out this way. They do a thing and they come back. So I'm kind of just banking on that at some point one of them is going to come back and it's going to be pretty close and I'm going to track them as they come in and here comes a puffin. This camera handles incredibly well in this situation. I wasn't expecting it comes another puffin. I missed that one. So as you can see the people down there very 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 far away and when i zoom into 100 which leaves them as not really the, i'm going to say they're 1 64th of the screen in, in terms of size just a very few pixels it actually identifies their face so not only does it identify that they're a human being but it also puts a box around their face even though they're too far away that i can't even see any features it, it knows so whatever whatever they're cooking up in here it's it's nice I said it'd be around here. Yeah, I think this must be it. Looks like they left me a gift pack here. Uh, an additional Fujifilm blimp. Now I get two, that's nice. Ramen noodles, shaken flavor, wow. Medium format Provia, a banana, five hot dogs, and a half consumed bottle of Icelandic uh, vodka. Rainy days rolling shutter check. Oh my, you better hang trash. Yeah, take that. Wow, there's like no rolling shutter. And now, 4K, 120 frames a second. This is what it looks like at 28 millimeters. Nice, right? And now, moving all the way in. And now, HD at 240 frames per second. Here we go. Pretty exciting stuff. And there's weather sealing on this. So if you come out here, you don't gotta be worried. If you're in a professional job and the sky does this and you're at a wedding day and you gotta keep taking your wedding pictures, it's no problem at all. Let's go take a handheld photo of a waterfall. Uh, one second. Another exciting thing is that all the ports, uh, so if you're just running your microphone only, there's a, a door just for that. And also it is out of the way of the screen. So if you do have a microphone in, it's up here nicely tucked away so it's not just right over top of the screen um yeah well done that full-size hdmi port it's nice it's tables we're so far away from tim tim's in the corner over here look at this how does it know how does it know that that's tim since we are still on pre-production fuji firmware it does not make sense to do an in-depth comparison yet but first we thought we'd compare to the canon r6 okay so what's it select on his body. Oh no, it's the chandelier now. Chandelier? Okay, right. start walking coming, towards us. Coming towards us, Liam. And there's his face. 
Wow. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call winner. Check out this kit, by the way. So far, the X-H2S has two accessories that Fujifilm has sent me. There are, there are more on the way, more in development. And uh, what I have here is one, the fan. I'm sure you've probably already been. Wait, well, here. Wow, right? The fan doesn't actually unlock any additional features, so you don't have to have the fan on to shoot 6.3K. You can just do that in the camera. What it will do is help keep things cool if you are in a hotter environment or if you're running it really hard, if you're doing 4K 120 or uh, 6.3K, it might be nice to have. All it does is just bolts on the back here. Next accessory, the battery grip. Put your two batteries in here, and what you'll notice is that the battery door doesn't actually come off the bottom here. What it does is it connects through here, the little USB-C connector, which means when you have two batteries in here and a battery in the camera, you can just plug the entire camera into USB-C and it will just charge all the batteries for you, which is really, really cool. And this battery grip will definitely, one, give you longer battery life in the field and also balance some of the larger lenses a little bit better, like the 150 to 600 that we're gonna be talking about. Two days time now. Oh, hey. Sorry. Thanks for joining us here in Iceland. If you have any questions about the new Fujifilm X-H2S, please drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And if I can't, someone else probably can. Don't forget to subscribe tomorrow. This lens, 18 to 120 f4. So subscribe, turn the bell on. And then the next day, the 150 to 600, the lens that will make all your wildest dreams come true. You were thinking that you wanted to be a professional photographer and without that lens, you will not be able to make that happen, unfortunately. That's a guarantee. Till next time, see ya. Hey everyone, I'm Lachlan, the founder of Focal. It's been such an honor to see so much demand for our all-in-one website and backend system built specifically for photographers. And in the past few months, our team here in Canada has been working so hard to meet the demand of over 600 photographers on our wait list. And I'm really excited to announce now that we've caught up. And if you're interested, you should totally book a meeting here with this super nice guy, Ben, uh, for a 15 minute meet and greet because we genuinely wanna to get to know you uh, and make sure Focal's a good fit for your business to help you achieve your goals. So we're really excited to see you soon.